Hello everyone, Artist Chibi here. Where's the fair use? This is the newest big trend since the Fine Brothers React World and Trademark Frenzy a few weeks back, which brought a lot of attention to fair use and those ignoring it, or have a heavily misguided understanding of it. You know, outside the fact that the Nostalgia Critics channel Awesome was going without the ability to monetize his videos for three weeks. But I digress. Now, you may have, you may be wondering why I am making a video regarding this new trend. I'll tell you why. I want to remind everyone that not all copyright claims are unfair. Why bother? Because I was struck with a copyright claim on one of my own videos a while back, but it was justified. So here it is, my copyright story. A few years back, I had just made a new YouTube account for subscribing to content I liked and for future use for my Facebook page, Artist Chibi Chibi's World. I also had forgotten the password to my old account. It was never taken down for any reason, just a case of bad memory, which happens a lot. Long before we were allowed to monetize our videos, it was okay to make videos with copyrighted material on it. Well, to an extent, it depended on the content being used. Since I was on a fresh account, I wanted to post my first video a video dedicated to the thylacine. If you don't know what a thylacine is, please Google Tasmanian Tiger. Anyway, I created the video using the old Windows Movie Maker and inserted the song Tara's Tea House. Because people loved making music videos, YouTube used to use their content ID system to identify the song used in the video and added the information of the song right in the video description box. That was fine by me. Not everyone would stay to the end of the video to see my credit to the original artist anyway. Outside a few stock images, and video clips that are public records, I used copyrighted material within my video. I had permission from a fellow DeviantArt user to use her drawing of the thylacine in my video as long as I'd credited her for the work, which I did. However, there was no way in hell I was going to be able to get permission from the original artist for Terrace Tea House. But I did use it anyway, knowing YouTube would auto-detect it and credit the original artist in my video description box. I wanted to use the song as it was the only one I could find at the time that expressed the sad story of this now extinct creature of the wild. After some time, when larger channels became even larger, YouTube started allowing all content creators to monetize their videos. When I looked at when I looked at my video manager, I noticed the option to monetize was set for the uh, was set for only the original artist of the song I used in my video. I do not mind this. My intentions of the video was to dedicate it to the thylacine. The copyright claim was and still is justified, and the video remains public to this very day for all to see. And if you want to check it out, I'll leave a link in the description below. I don't mind. If you don't want to check it out, that's up to you. The reason behind me telling you this is because of the ignorance and misguided understanding of fair use. I use the full unedited version of a copyrighted song. While my intent was not to make a profit from it, that does make it a little less different from these reaction channels and the Facebook asshole freebooters. I do take full responsibility for that video, and I will take it down if they want me to take it down. But my video is in no way fair use of the song. It was, it is not reviewing it, it is not a parody of it, none of that. My biggest issue with the misguided understanding or complete ignorance of fair use is that the channels who are doing things that are copyright infringing, practically pirating, other people's hard work are not getting punished for it. They are trying to make a profit from these videos that they are stealing from other people. 
Yet channels like Channel Awesome or Chibi Reviews, who are within fair use, are getting copyright strikes because movie industries and TV industries are abusing the copyright system YouTube has currently set up to take down the channels who follow the rules. But it isn't just the movie industry doing it. Some gaming industries are doing it as well. Some gamers, some Let's Players have been struck with copyright strikes and copyright claims because they don't, they don't want their games put into videos. Mind you, uh, gaming developers are starting to see the profit in Let's Play games, but they do have set rules, which these Let's Players do, uh, uh, do follow. So, they're, that's getting settled, though. Thankfully. Doug Walker, the Nostalgia Critic, went into better details about all this, and I do suggest going to see and go to see his video if you haven't already. I'll leave a link to his video in the description below. Bluntly stated, almost no one is safe to upload their videos anymore. A lot of us are becoming too scared to upload our own content in fear of getting hit by a copyright strike. Doug proposed a very decent idea in his video to help stop the trolls and heavily slow down these unnecessary strikes. Chibi Reviews, an anime and manga review channel, doesn't even show any footage or images in his videos when talking about the latest episode or chapter. Yet he was hit on three episodes. According to his statement, from what I recall, the strike was made manually, meaning the person who set the strike saw the video and made a false claim on it. I'm rather glad he got the issue resolved, but it doesn't change the fact that it happened, and could happen to him again, or to anyone else on YouTube. Crimson Rogue, another review channel, was also struck with a copyright strike. N not because of what he talked about in the video, but actually probably because of it. But because of the thumbnail he used for his particular review, which even I have to agree is absolute bullshit. I don't, I don't even understand how, why they would do that. I mean, the thumbnail is so low resolution that no one can really tell what it really is. And within fair use law, well, within copyright law, that is allowed. So I don't, I don't see what's the problem with using a particular thumbnail if it has to do with the subject of the video. I cannot confirm this particular example, but someone else stated that a YouTuber was hit with a copyright strike for simply singing for one of her re relatives and uploaded the video. Again, I cannot confirm this, but if it does turn out to be true, then even as Doug stated in one of his other videos addressing the copyright issue, our own home movies are not safe at all. In my honest opinion, this entire thing goes beyond YouTube. It goes beyond Facebook, but we need to start somewhere. I find it sad that we have to make a big fuss about this, but it is important that we do. As content creators, we need to make a stand and help get our voices heard. We want to be allowed to upload our own content, our own reviews, our own parodies without the fear of being deleted. We need to stop this abuse of the copyright system that threatens our very freedom to uphold the proper copyright laws. To be quite honest, I really hope this will actually bring proper attention to the reaction channels that are illegally uploading full videos and not going within fair use that are practically copyright infringing. And I am really hoping one of these days, Facebook takes down free booting pages because they really deserve it. Please, everyone. For the sake of channels, our channels, our own content, please share Doug Walker's video with the hashtag WTFU. For Twitter, don't just tag YouTube, no, include Google. Google, as a lot of us already knows, runs YouTube now. They need to know this. 
We are the reason YouTube is even alive. We are the reason YouTube is so popular. If it weren't for us, YouTube would have been left in the digital dust with the only video uploaded by its original creators, titled, Me at the Zoo. This is artist Chibi asking, where's the fair use? Oh, <laughs> my